Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks, and today I'm playing in a platoon, a platoon of two fat German Yak Panzer E100s, and you know, it's going to be a good time when you have two 170mm top tier German tank destroyers going in in matching skins. Today I'm playing with a player called Capture Win. Capture Win took part in an event which I ran on Friday the event was ELC AMX versus Chaffee. Hopefully some of you managed to tune into it. We had 14 Chaffees, 14 ELC AMXs facing off against each other. And while it was a real close run game, or a tournament I should say, the Chaffees fell to the ELC AMXs on Prokhorovka to be fair, with the ELC AMXs going three rounds against the Chaffees two rounds. It was a wonderful event. One of the things that I like to do at the end of the event is to get everybody in there to pick their favorite tier 10 tank and to play a game against each other just to round off the event. Capture Win played their Jagdpanzer E100 and they managed to deal something silly like 6,600 damage and pulled off some fantastic one shots in their Jagdpanzer E100. So I inspected Capture Win and Capture Win has about I think it's 47-48% wins in World of Tanks. And I noticed that even in their favorite vehicle, the Jagdpanzer E100, Capture Win was at 49% wins. I could not let this stand. I contacted Capture Win and I said, hey bud, do you want to play some games together? And Capture Win was like, yeah, yeah, let's go. At least I hope that's what they were like. They definitely trolled me a little bit, which was wonderful. Uh, you're seeing me now in the middle of the run of games that we had. And the idea was, that we would win enough in a row that Capture Win would be able to have 50% wins in their Yank Panzer E100. I think we had to end up winning about six games in a row for that to happen. Whether it's going to occur or not, I'm not going to spoil this video, but the game alone outside of the, the scene that I've set and the narrative that you have here as to why we're playing together, the game alone would be justifying the video anyway, as we're going to be seeing later on. So I was absolutely trying my heart out, being incredibly sweaty uh, to be able to, to get the wins. The last thing that I want is to play with a member of my community and be like, hey bud, let's go, let's go and get yourself some wins so you can manage to, to boost up your win ratio in your Jagdpanzer E100, your favorite tank to 50%, which would be wonderful. And then we end up losing. And I, yeah, that, 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 that wouldn't happen. And so I kind of got this huge kind of adrenaline rush. Usually I'm just playing World of Tanks and I can tell whether the game is going to be won or lost. And while I try to win, yeah, at the end of the day, it's just a game. I felt like I owed it to capture win, to pull out all the stops in the Jagdpanzer E100. And that's why you see me firing pretty much nothing but high explosive anti-tank ammunition. That's right, I'm loading the gold, so hopefully we can boost up Capture Wind's win ratio here. Now the Jagdpanzer E100's high explosive anti-tank rounds have the highest penetration in World of Tanks. Now the vehicles like the Object 268 were nerfed many years ago from having 450. 420 millimeters of penetration means that if you hit anything just roughly flat, then usually you are going to be able to go through it. And it feels a bit bad spending pretty much about 7,000 credits to do 38 damage to a Jagdpanzer E100 and then 139 damage to a mouse when you have 1,050 alpha damage in a vehicle like this. Yeah, it really does hit hard. But you know what? Once again, I couldn't give a monkeys. I would spend millions of credits if I had to to see if we could manage to give Capture Win every opportunity to be able to take these battles down. So I love what we're doing here. I, the way that I play my tier 10 German tank destroyers, especially this one, is aggressive. I want to take the fight to the enemy team. And this is a big moment. Will we get rid of the artillery? Oh, come on. This is such a big moment. Please, baby. No! Oh, dear. The tier 10 self-propelled gun is now in the perfect position above us and behind so many bushes at the top of their mound that I'm never going to be able to see them again. And yeah, what do you think happens when you've got an artillery above two big German tank destroyers? Well, actually not a lot anymore. <laughs> I have so much trauma from back in the day from losing so many hit points. I get stunned. More of an annoyance. 
Uh, capture Wind loses about 100 hit points, which is definitely not great to lose. And I'm going to blind fire an armor piercing round here at the Manticore. Whether we hit them or not remains to be seen. We could only be wishful. A Manticore having enough hit points to be able to, to take a hit or two. And the Manticore was last spotted all the way towards the southeastern flank. So I'm pretty happy about that. Talking about expensive gold rounds in World of Tanks, there's no more expensive gold round, I believe, than on the FB215B183. But oh dear, that T92 shuts down Capture Win. No, oh, please tell me it's not going to be RNG against the artillery that costs us a victory in this round. But the FB215B183's high explosive squash head ammunition costs 8,000 credits. And for them to hit me but deal no damage to me is something that would have only happened with the high explosive changes in World of Tanks. Making a vehicle like this, a nice big beefy TD, way better against an FV215B183 at least, unless they're firing armor piercing rounds, than it would have been before. Alright, so with the artillery now alive, my hand is forced. I don't think that E100 expected me to be there, but I'll definitely take that one down. My hand is forced. I have to hide behind a whole plethora of hetzers, a swarm of hetzers here, all stacked up to be able to provide me protection from the self-propelled gun. Now the manticore hits me in the side from up on the hill with an armor-piercing composite ridge round, and the Rhinoceronte comes around and fires two standard rounds into my vehicle, luckily one that managed to bounce. And look, Capture Win is getting behind me. You could do it. Thank you, Capture Win. I'm not really feeling very confident in this scenario. But you know what the most important thing is to do here? The most important thing to do is to try and go down swinging. Ah, oh, did I just cheap out and fire armor piercing rounds when the high explosive anti-tank rounds would have probably gone into the FV215B183 there? Talk about a paradox of me saying I'm willing to spend millions of credits to be able to get these wins, but I'm not willing to actually fire the rounds of the most important tanks like the FV215B183 on the enemy team. To be fair though, it's not like I wanted to blind fire my final two high explosive anti-tank rounds at the Manticore and the artillery that were on top of the hill. And once again, I am just in a very awkward situation. The Manticore finally shows their ugly head. And unfortunately for me, they're above a thousand hit points, which means that I didn't manage to hit them. Luckily, I've turned my vehicle around quick enough with the turbo that I have on this tank, and I managed to ricochet a Manticore around, and I'm hoping that the Rhinoceronte makes a mistake, but right now I'm in a rock and a hard place. But thankfully, both of these players are in front of my vehicle, just where I want them to be. Artillery managed to do 378 damage to the Rhinoceronte, which really helps me out. I'm hoping that somebody can try and back me up against the Manticore, but it doesn't seem to be going too well now. And our E100 has lost pretty much all of their hit points against the 60TP. So the Manticore came around the corner, but unfortunately for me, my big fat German butt was getting slammed into the Hetzers behind me, and so that made it so that I was unable to turn the vehicle quick enough. Now, clever girl, the Italian Heavy seems to be trying to flank me and coming around here. Turn, 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 turn. Come on, one ricochet. There we go. Hopefully we catch him. Yes, we do. Oh, my lord. 840 damage down and another tier 10 heavy vanquished. And we will fall possibly to the Manticore here. Do we? No, we actually ricochet the Manticore, keeping ourselves in the game. And the FB215B183 is also in position. Don't want to go around the corner there. Otherwise, the artillery will probably be able to shut me down with my eight remaining hit points. And the Manticore is now trying to flank me in the side. He doesn't do any damage to himself even though he felt like he bumped into me i was hoping that i could get a few extra hundred rounds there well a few hundred rounds a few hundred damage into the manticore with the crash maybe block him off from possibly some kind of crossfire fortunately the leopard manages to get devoured by the stritzfang 103b and despite capture win massaging my ego saying nice try i just don't feel like i've done enough but i guess at least i i i did Maybe not enough. It's not like I've done nothing. And I was truly hoping now that our team would be able to take this one down. And whoop, that's a good start. Maybe, pff, dang, son. Both artilleries vanquishing vehicles on either side. With our artillery, who's called Nielsen DK66, shutting down that pesky manticore who gave me the runaround. And then the T92 on the enemy team shutting down the E100 on our team. Can you believe it? This is the butterfly effect of World of Tanks. Imagine if that T92 hadn't got lucky and evaded my shell earlier on in the battle. This would have almost been a guaranteed win. And I was just hoping that RNG was not 
going to cause a loss for capture win. This is meant to be the quest for 50% win ratio, not the quest to be able to drop down capture win's win ratio. In this moment, I went and I took a look at the artillery. And let me pause that there because Nielsen DK kindly gave me their Object 261 replay. So here we join Nielsen DK-66 preparing to shoot an FV-215B-183. That was a spicy near thousand damage. Definitely turning the tables there. I'm sure the 121B was very happy. Until I open my big mouth again, the T-92 shuts down the 121B. What is this? This is like a back and forth duel between the self-propelled guns right now. All right, we're back to my point of view, and I'm trying to get the Gorilla prepped and ready to take on the 60TP. I tell the Gorilla, he's like 300 HP. Just make sure you pen. 261, go TD mode. He'll camp the building. Oh dear, the 60 TP on the enemy team is firing high explosive rounds and manages to do over half of the gorilla's hit points in a single shot. 971 damage dealt when the 60 TP, I believe with HE, does 900 average damage. So in this scenario, this is just a complete nightmare. I could see a disaster happening. Is the Gorilla going to go around the corner aggressively against the 60TP? No. Is the Gorilla going to sit out in the open for the artillery? Possibly. Nielsen, unfortunately, tries to whiff a shell, I guess, above the 60TP. Maybe possibly trying to get a splash around the corner there. But unfortunately, it wasn't to be. I'm trying to ask Nielsen right now, please go TD mode because this 60TP is not coming out of here. And to all intents and purposes, the 60TP is going to be able to pen a high explosive round. So come on, Nielsen. You've got to go TD mode, buddy. Go and help this Gorilla out. If you approach from both angles, there's no way the 60TP can be able to handle it. And more importantly, the 60TP is just never going to come out from this campy building position. I'm sure the 60TP was probably asking the T92 to change their position. And there we go! Nielsen's actually making the move! And I say, Gorilla, wait for the 261. And I start to get a bit frenetic. Wait! 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 Oh, no, don't do it! Wait! Oh, God! No, not like this! Why would that donkey try to side-scrape a high-explosive-wielding 60TP? I thought it was all done. But Q, our hero, Nielsen DK, as he enters a 1 versus 2 scenario. So I thought we were completely screwed at this stage. But Nielsen DK66 is holding their nerve they're aiming at the corner, and they have an armor-piercing round loaded. They lose the reticle! They aim back again! They fire, and they pen an armor-piercing round on the 60TP, who has had an absolute heroic round now. Nielsen DK-66, including the blind fire against the FV-215B183, is up to probably at least 3,000 damage, including the other blind shots in this game. And look how our team is getting into this. People are saying this game is giving them a heart attack. I say, and that's my anonymizer name, you're a legend. Play to win. Charge him. Come on, Nielsen DK. You've got everything to gain and nothing to lose in this scenario. But unfortunately, in this situation, Nielsen DK only has armor piercing rounds left. And I'd say that it'd be far better to have a high explosive round, if not just to splash the T-92, but also considering how weak the armor is on the T-92, they'd probably be able to just go through the hull and, oh dear, it's a very old-fashioned artillery showdown. One versus one. Nielsen DK pushes forwards here. Nielsen over the ridgeline. Will the T-92 fire? Nielsen, unfortunately, with the armor-piercing rounds, they don't have quite as good of a trajectory as the high-explosive rounds would do, and so he's not able to shoot over the ridgeline nearly as easily as possibly the T-92 is able to. Now, with a minute left on the game, Nielsen resets the view range, goes forwards, decides to commit. The T-92 misses the shot! Nielsen possibly has one shell to make it! And he hits it as well! What an insane hero at the end of the game. And I could not believe this. It's almost as if it was scripted. Imagine, well, of course, my YouTube videos are slightly scripted because I play the games as they go along. But when it was happening live, 
I, my mind boggled. The drama, the fact that we were there with Capture Win trying to get him his 50% wins and his Jagdpanzer E100, his favorite tier 10 tank. And then everything was looking absolutely, completely bleak. And then Nielsen manages to pull off a one versus two scenario after you see a gorilla lose all of their hit points to a 60 TP that had 200. My ticker could not take it. What an awesome round of World of Tanks. So when I was looking at the post-game stats, all fairly normal stuff. I managed to do 4,000 damage and get 4 kills in my Jagdpanzer 100 and managed to block a lot as well. But then I realized, look at the 60 TP on the enemy team. YouTube, what a heartbreak for them. As Rocker Vault, if that is not their anonymized name, managed to do 9,400 damage. Although I would argue 1,800 was pretty much fed to the a platter by the gorilla on our team. What a complete heartbreak for that player. They would have been nigh on up to 10,000 damage if they had shut down Nielsen, but it wasn't to be as Nielsen secures the kill, adding to their 3,000 damage that they dealt to cap out at 3,200 in that game and also pick up four kills as well. What a hero, Nielsen. It was an absolute pleasure to play with you. Congratulations and thank you so much for taking this game down for our team so we can continue on Capture Win's epic quest towards 50% win ratio. And thank you very much to you, Nielsen, for sharing your replay. It, the, the two perspectives hopefully will make this video awesome for YouTube. After the game, I got chatting to Nielsen and I found out that they also make their own music. And so if you want to go say hi, give their video a few more views than the 171 that it currently has and maybe let them know in the comments how awesome their 261 gameplay was then i'll be putting the link through to one of nielsen's youtube videos in my description below where you can go and listen to his song wake up so all in all th this was definitely one of my my favorite things about playing multiplayer games it's the people behind it's the epic moments it's the drama a massive thank you to capture win for playing with me once again, thank you very much, Nielsen. You, you really made this one special for me, bud. Appreciate it. And hopefully everyone out there watching this video enjoyed it as well. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up if you like that dual perspective. Yeah, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And if you're watching this video as it's released on Sunday, it's time for the World of Tanks Tech Tree Showcase live right now on twitch.tv forward slash quickie baby. This week, all of you have voted to see the Polish medium tanks culminating with the CS-63, which is the fastest medium tank in the game. So come along if you like your gameplay ultra fast and flexible. So we take that Polish SAR out onto the battlefield. Maybe I'll try and even get a ram or two along the way. So really looking forward to seeing all of you live right now on twitch.tv forward slash quickie baby. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.